Two times in a row, uh, number one in Latin America, well, and now number ten in the world. Uh, of course, it's uh, motivating for for me and for my team, definitely, because uh, Nikkei cuisine and Peruvian cuisine itself. Uh, if we think about ten years ago or less, maybe it was not well known around the world, and now uh, this is like a sign. That, uh, that Peruvian cuisine is getting more popular. Pe people like, you know, uh, Peruvian flavors, Peruvian ingredients. But the most important thing about uh, the ranking, I think, that is not only the place you are in. You know, it could be it could be number one, number two, number fifty, or even if you're not in the list. I think the important thing about uh, what Fifty Best has done, uh, it's uh, getting chefs together around the world. Um, in the Latin America list, in the Asia 50 best list, and in the 50 best uh, world list, because um, once in a once a year, you are able to to meet people that you've never met before. Sometimes, now we are friends uh, with most of them, and we enjoy being together. We enjoy sharing knowledge. We enjoy being uh, able to talk about food, talking about the future. Uh, and I think that is something really important for the food industry uh, and it's going to be uh, something that is going to help to improve what we do every day. So regardless of, of, of being number one or being whatever uh, place you are in at the list, I think the important thing is that we have managed to, to bring the industry, the industry together and that is something very important. If I think that Maido is the best restaurant in Lima, it's very hard to say, you know. Um, there are many, many restaurants that are really, really good. And uh, I, I always say that food is very subjective. What I like is not the same that what you like or what people here that are crossing behind me like, you know. Um, taste is a matter of uh, taste. So it, it depends actually on people. So to say which is the best, I mean, uh, I really will not be able to say that. But in this case, uh, I would say that many, many people like what we do. We appreciate that and we thank all the customers and uh, all the, I would say, uh, people that have been supporting us. This year we're gonna be 10 years since we opened the restaurant. And uh, we thank them for that, we thank them for for being together with us and and thinking that we're the best, but I really think that for food, in not in Peru only, but in the world, it's impossible to say which is the best. You cannot say that. You know, it's like art. It's like music. You know, you, you you cannot say which is the best band of the world. You cannot say which is the best artist, the best painter, the best. Uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, you you can name so many uh, art performances, actors, actresses. I mean, there are so many that have so many different styles that it's impossible to say. I talked about closing a couple of uh, years ago. We will close the restaurant at some point soon. Actually, the last interview I gave, I said it was going to be uh, 2023. But I really don't want to talk about dates because um, during these last two years, we have been developing very interesting new things. So uh, my goal, and that's what I need people to understand, uh, rather than putting a date on closing the restaurant, uh, which m it may have been a mistake, it's uh, letting people know that what I want to do in the future, in the near future, is to democratize my food. I mean, I want my food to be able to be eaten for the more people. Uh, we have Maido, which is a restaurant that not many people can go. So I think a chef's dream is to make people eat your food and being able to eat it because of having a better price, being 
you know, have, having more restaurants. But in order to do that, you need to be focused. And uh, yes, my goal in a, in a near future is to be able to have restaurants that are more accessible for, for people in Peru and in the world to be able to try my food. And that will make me happy. What's DK? Well, in Peru, we have a lot of cuisines that uh, have influenced our Peruvian cuisine. Italian, Japanese, Chinese, Spanish, African. So when you go to Peru, sometimes you really don't understand why you're... I mean, everything is tasty, but we have so many external influences that uh, made Peruvian cuisine what it is right now, that uh, sometimes it makes you feel, am I eating Peruvian food or am I eating Asian food or European food? And that is Peru. We Peruvianize everything and we give it our touch. So one of the most important influences in Peruvian cuisine is Japanese. So Nikkei, to summarize it, is Peruvian cuisine influenced by Japanese techniques and products. You know what? I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, so I don't know what's going to happen in 20 years. Uh, but if I have to dream about it, I hope it's all over the world, you know, because I always say Nikkei cuisine is a very sexy cuisine. It's a very, uh, I would say, it's a perfect balance between Peru and Japan. It's not as strong as Peruvian cuisine. It's not as subtle as Japanese cuisine. So many people in the world like it. Uh, now, nowadays in Europe, there are many Nikkei restaurants. So I hope to see more in the near future, uh, not only in Europe, you know, in Asia and uh, in other continents, because it's a cuisine that I think is growing a lot during these last eight to 10 years.